Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the calculus. Today we will discuss about sequence and its various example. Myself Dr. Garg. You can simply follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harish Garg for finding the various videos on the subject. So let's start with the sequence. Firstly, what is the sequence? Is it is an ordered set of the numbers called as the AIs, where AI is called as individual of the AI is called as the term of the sequence, and it is denoted by uh, either as a curly braces of this or as of this a n. Here, if this a one, a two, a three, and up to four are my infinites, then we call as the infinite sequence. Otherwise, we call as the finite sequence. Here. For example, if we consider the set of the even numbers two, four, six, eight, so on, this is the infinite series or uh, infinite numbers are there, so we call as the infinite sequence, and it is represented as two n, where n is nothing but my natural number, or it is written like here. Here, the what is the nth term of this sequence is? This is called as the two n is called as the nth term or the general term. So based on this, uh, uh, based on these features, we can def formally define the sequence. Which is a function whose domain is a set of the natural numbers and co-domain is my real numbers. For example, if you consider here as a n is my this, clearly says that when you take n is one, it's minus one and so on. This is the infinite sequence. Similarly, for here, when you take n is equal to one, so what will happen? It's a zero. If you take n is two, then it will be my one by two and so on. So it is called as the again infinite sequence. Are there. similarly for here. This sequence is basically divided into the three categories. One is called as the os convergent sequence, divergent sequence, and oscillating sequence. When the convergent is said to be, when the sequence is said to be convergent, when when you find the nth term of the sequence, that is called as the a n. And if you compute the limit, and if it is exist as well as the finite, then we can say it's a convergent. On the other hand, what is the meaning of the divergent? Is when the limit does not exist. Or if it is either as a plus infinity or minus infinity, then we can say the sequence is my divergent. What is oscillating is the sequence which is neither the convergent nor the divergent. For example, here you can see the sequence. This will be my minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. It can never converge to the single point P. So it means this is a divergent, neither the divergent nor the convergent. This os oscillating sequence is again dividing to the two category. One is oscillating finitely, second is the infinitely, which is depending on the nature whether the sequence is bounded or not. Clearly says that this sequence is bounded. It lies between minus one to plus one. So it means this is a bounded sequence. So anything which is bounded but not convergent, neither the convergent nor divergent is called as oscillating finitely. On the other hand, if it is unbounded, then it is like. Called as the oscillating infinite, and this is a very good example of this. Now, what is the formal? Uh, how you can uh, say the sequence to be convergent? So, if I say the sequence a n is said to be convergent to the number l, which is generally written like here. What is the meaning of that? For example, if I consider the sequence is say one by n, what is the meaning of that? You get as a one, then one by two, one by three, and so on. So, what is the meaning of that? Say this is my one. After that, it's a half. Then it's one by three and so on. So until you will as n approaches infinity, you can see it will convert. Say this is my one, this is my half, this is my one by three and so on. So it will it will goes like this way. So it means at infinity the distance between the points, the distance between the functions and the convergent point is a very very small whenever n approaches infinity. For example, again. If I consider this is a set of the natural numbers, and the function is my one by n. So when n is one, the value is my one. When n is two, it is my half. Then it's one by three. So graph will be look like say here. So then clearly sees that whenever n is greater than m, where m is a very large number, so you can say this is here. So the distance between this number and the previous number is a very very small. However, in case of this, you can see the distance is my Half, which is very large number. Distance is one by two minus one by three. That is a one by six. But if whenever n is infinity, so you can see the distance is very very small, called as the epsilon. So when such condition happen, we call as the convergent of the sequence. So you can simply say that whenever the limit of the any of the a n is exist, then can say is a convergent. Otherwise not. Or we can write as limit n approaches infinity. Or we can simply write as A n that is a sequence convergent to the L. 
if there is no such l exists then we can say the limit does not exist or we can say the sequence is divergent or not convergent remember that whenever the limit of the sequence exists then it is always be the unique how you can prove that that's a very simple assume that a n is my sequence and it existence to the l that is my here your target is to prove it is a unique so assume that the the limit is not unique it means there exists another l dash such that limit goes to the l dash but l dash is not equal to n now your target is to prove if i prove that l dash is l what is the meaning of that it's a unique so now what is that you have to apply the definition of this sequence that is for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists m such that this holds similarly we can apply the same definition to this we can say there is epsilon dash m dash and so on now we can start from the l minus l dash we can write here i can write this value in terms of this what is the value of the a plus b it is always be mod of a plus mod of b so this is my a this is my b now i can read because i need the a n minus l so i can take this as here so this value is my epsilon this value is my epsilon dash so since both the numbers are very very small so we can say this is true whenever say this is m this is say m dash so what is that this portion is the common which is nothing but my maximum of this now here these both numbers are very very small so the sum is also very small hence l minus l dash is less than equal to 0 but l minus l dash is less than equal to 0 it's a very small number but since mode can never be the zeros less than zeros it means it will be a equality so hence limit of the sequence if exists is always a uniqueness now remember that how you can prove that so whenever the limit exists and finite then we can say the convergence to the l otherwise not for example here you have to check whether these sequences are convergent or not what you can do you have to find the limit of n approaches infinity a n in each of the case what is the limit of this it goes to the zero what is the limit of this is goes to the infinity what is the limit of this it is a plus one if n is even otherwise odd you can say this zero is my finite and it's a unique so what is the meaning of that this is my convergent it's a finite unique it's a convergent so we can write here this is not a finite it means it is a not convergent again these limits are my finite but they are not unique because it's plus one or minus one so it's not a unique it is not a convergent now how you can check the convergence of the sequence so i will tell you the two different methods are there first method is by using the direct limit rule that is you have to compute the limit check whether this l is my unique or finite then convergent otherwise not what is the second method is any of the sequence is said to be convergent if you prove that this sequence a n is a non-decreasing and it is bounded by above p. so we will discuss this in our next lecture so, so in the right lecture we are talking about this method also so we will discuss about the 10 examples in this video so that you may be able to understand more quickly so find check the convergence of the sequence are there how you can check that so let's start with the first part you have to find the limit so what is the limit of this so if you take the limit you will get as here so what is the limit as n approaches infinity so we all knows limit n approaches infinity a raised to power n will go to the zero if a is less than one so clearly say that two by three is less than one so this limit goes to the zero this is also goes to the zero so zero minus zero is zero which is unique as well as finite so it means this is my convergence look for the second part again we try to find this how you can find the limit if you take the limit as this this is the zero by infinity by infinity so you have to take the either as the l of beta rule or you can divide it both side by n now what is happen as n approaches infinity this goes to the zero this goes to the zero this goes to the zero so it will be two plus zero upon zero minus zero that means infinity that will goes to the 2 plus 0, 0 minus 0 goes to infinity, which is not a finite. It means this sequence is not a convergent. That means this is a divergent sequence. Look about the third part. Again, we have to find the limits. So what is the limit of this? Again, you can divide it both sides by n. You will get here. So what is that? This will goes to the 0. And what is the answer of this is? It will be root 2. So which is a unique as well as the finite. So it is a convergent. Now you can take the limit of this. How you can do that? So it will goes to the 
again this is the either plus one or minus one so you have to divide it this by and then both so what is the answer of this it goes to the zero it goes to the zero so the limit will be my one so that will be my either the minus two or or sorry it's a either the minus one or it's a plus one is there because it's a what is that it's a two plus zero upon two plus zero that is my one and it's because of the plus minus either a plus one or minus one so limit is finite but again it's not a unique so it is a not a divergent look at the another examples are there so look at the another four examples so say what is that again you have to apply this so what is the limit n approaches infinity of ln upon this how you can solve that it's a infinity by infinity so we have to apply the l operator rule so divide it here so clearly says that 1 by n is cancel out 2 will be cancel out the limit will be 1 so what is this 2 it's a unique and finite so which is means it's a convergent look for the second part so again if you take infinity so it's a 3 raised to power infinity over infinity so again infinity by infinity so it's the allopeter rule so you have to apply by using the allopeter rule here again when you take infinity it goes to the infinity this is a constant again it's a infinity so again apply the allopeter rule again it's a infinity by infinity again apply the allopeter rule so here this is a constant value so if you apply the infinity it will goes to the infinity so which is not a finite number what is the meaning of that it means it is not a convergent look about the another case so if you take the limit of this what will happen of this limit 2n plus 1 as n approaches infinity make sure that this numerator part will be either the plus 1 or minus 1 depending on that n is even or odd so this is a constant value so if you take infinity it means it will goes to the 0 so it will goes to the 0 which is a unique as well as the finite so it's a convergent how you solve this so if you take the limit as n approaches infinity sin n upon n so clearly says that what is the limit of the sign n this is the value which are lies between plus 1 to minus 1 so it means any of the number which are lies between minus 1 to plus 1 that's a finite number so when you take infinity finite upon n so it, it will goes to the 0 so again it's a 0 it's a unique and finite so we call as the convergent sequence this is the one method are there and other because this is the plus minus one are there so we can solve these two method by again another method which we call as the sandwich theorem are there so how we can deal with that so let's st state firstly with the sandwich theorem if you have considered the three sequence a b and c such that a n is less than b is less than of c n then if you find the limit if find the limit of a n if you find the b limit of the c n both are same then the limit of the b and is also be the same that's the sandwich theorem are there so for example we already discussed three examples in our previous now we apply the sandwich theorem to apply this so look at that in the first case you have here your target is to find the two sequence which are less than of this and this how you can do look at that this number is my minus one plus minus so it means what is that this is lies between minus one to here now we can take the limit n approaches infinity on the both side if you take the limit n approaches infinity what will happen this will 1 upon infinity 0 what is that this is the limit here what is that this is 0 so what is the meaning of that any number which lies between 0 and 0 is itself a 0 so this limit is my unique this limit is my finite as well so therefore this sequence is my convergent similarly look about the second part we can again write in terms of this now we can take the limit on the both side and then how you can take the limit because it's a zero by zero form so we can take this here so what is the answer of this it when you take n approaches infinity it's a minus one which is limit n approaches infinity of a n it is my plus one so do you get what is that it's a minus one to plus one how many numbers which are lies between minus one to plus one it means limit n approaches infinity is not unique although it's a finite number minus one to plus one but it is not unique so it means it is not a convergent sequence that means this sequence is my divergent so sorry it's a minus one to plus one so when you apply them so because the limit is not unique so it means it is not a convergent 
Similarly, you can see sin n by n. So sin n is lies between minus 1 to plus 1. Divide it both sides by n. Take the limits. You can see it's a 0 and 0. So it means the it's a finite and unique. So it's a convergent. Now, apart from them, there are the third kinds where you can commonly use these inequalities are or these relations are there. You can easily derive that because it's infinity by infinity. So you can take the L of Peter rule. It goes to the 0 and so on. Now, based on these formulas, you can find the limits of this. Either you can use the limit as and as discussed in the previous, otherwise you can use here. So let's start with the first one. How you can take the limit of this? Because now it's a power of n. So it's a if you take the limit as this, so how you can take that? You can start with this. Now you can think about this. This is the case of this. It is for all the x. So if you compare them, what is the value of the x in this case? There is a 1. If you case in the denominator side, what is the value of the x? It's a minus 1. So you can see this is my limit, which is a unique and finite. So hence it's a convergent sequence. Look for the second part here. So clearly see that this number is my 1. So this number is my limit and approach is infinity ln over 1. So what is that? This will goes to the infinity, which is not a finite. Hence, it is not a convergent. Look about the third part. What is that? If it is, look at this part. x raised to power n upon n factorial for all x. So if I consider x as here, I can return this as of this. So what is the value of this? It will go to the 0. So the answer is my infinity, which is not a finite number. Once it's not a finite, so it means it is not a convergent. Look at the another R there again because it's a factorial R there, so you can apply any one of them. So you can see this portion we can apply. So for here, you can clearly say that x is nothing but my 6. If you consider x as a 6 in here, you will get the same expression of this. So which is an infinite, so it's not a finite, so not a convergent. Similarly, for the second part, again, if you look about that, this is a 10 raised to power 6. x is my 10 raised to power 6 because it is true for all x. So again, it's not a convergent. Look for the last part. If you consider here, you can take the limits. How you can do? You can take the logarithm outside and then limit n approaches infinity of this. So what is the limit of this portion? You can say the limit of this portion is here. X is my 1. So what is the limit of this is here? So you can say this is nothing but my log of e. e raised to power 1 is e. So log of ln is, is my 1, which is a unique as well as finite, so it's the convergent sequence. Okay, look at the last two questions are there. How you can solve this? So again, we can start from here. So how you can find the limit of this? this? If you think about that, you can use this, but it is not true. Because if you look about that, this is my n. But here is a no linear. This is the n square. But we need a n. So it means this formula is not be applicable for here. It means it is not equal to here. You can't say that. Because here is n and here is n square. So what I can do, I can take the LCM here. I can factorize them. This is n minus 1, n plus 1. Over n square, I can write 1 as here and second is this. Now, I can take the pair of this. I can divide the numerator and denominator by n. Now we can apply this formula here. Because this is my linear. This is my linear. So what is the answer of this is? The first part is e raised to power 1. Second part is e raised to power minus 1. So it is my 1 is there. So which is a unique and finite. So we can say it's a convergent. Similarly, if you look about that, how you can solve that? Again, we will find the limit. So how you can do that? I can divide it this by 4n. You will get here. We can apply this. So e raised to power, what is the value of the x for this case? What is the value of the x is my 1 by 4. So it is here. And it is my minus 1 by 4. So what is the answer is e raised to power half, which is again unique and the finite. So we can say this is a convergent sequence. This is the way you can solve the convergent method. How you can find the sequence is convergent or not with the help of direct limit method. There is another method we call as the monotonic and bounded that we will discuss in our next class. Till then, you can simply follow uh, my this YouTube channel, Dr. Harishkar, and you can simply share, like, and comment my videos. Till then, best of luck students, happy learning.